quite a long time I was dealing with young coaches. I was in charge of the program. And the young coaches who often had a lot of racing experience, in, they were coming out from the clubs, they were becoming coaches. And I saw they, they had the nice skills, but they really did not have a tools or means of transferring their abilities or their knowledge to, to the younger kids. Or either they were trying to coaching on their own level without taking in consideration the level of growth and development of the kids. In other cases, they just didn't have tools how to transfer it, so they, they were lacking uh, skills of adapting the exercises that they were doing on their level, adapting those exercises so they could be useful for, let's say, six, seven years old, because we can, we can work pretty much on the same skills, you know, regardless if you are in advanced skier or, 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 um, or some kind of intro-level kid, you just have to adapt them to the growth and development level. I started about 20 years ago, then when I took the job in Tremblant and for 10 years I was just working with intro-level kids. Uh, I had uh, quite a big program there, so I took a break for about 10 years and I'm again almost full-time since about 6 How years How many now. courses last year did you facilitate? The... Last year not a lot, last year I had about 13. 13, the year before you had 17. 17. I think it was Canadian record, yes. Yes, it is. And, yes. and how many DL have you facilitated lately? Last year, two or three. Okay. And this year, you had the snow conditions that really did not permit yeah. it. But, you know, at one point, uh, there is this satisfaction of of passing your experience to the to the guys who are as passionate as you. Uh, people have different, motiv different motivations uh, to become a coach. Uh, for some uh, young athletes who are finishing the career, they just want it to be like, you know, maybe a year or two in, when they are doing some other things and they're planning to go to school. But it's particularly satisfying when you see young thinking person who is motivated, who really loves the sport, but at the same time you see this drive to become a coach and, and pass their own knowledge and they just need the skills. So, so working with those people is extremely satisfying because uh, you can just provide them with kind of main structure of how to do it and they already often have skills. I think for me personally the biggest challenges are if the things are not going well. I mean you know anybody who comes to the course like either DL or 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 intro it's not because somebody forced them and the most challenging thing for me is to tell this person look uh, you have skills on that level but to to be able to effectively work with with young kids or with athletes on development level your skills have to be a little bit higher and that's extremely emotional for me sometimes they think that i'm cruel and this is not cruelty in fact my primary obligation in those situations is not necessarily those those coaches candidates but to the athletes that they are going to be coaching and i try to pass this message it's nothing personal you are almost there, you just need to spend another year thinking about it or, or practicing. Uh, but again, my primary obligation is to the athletes that they are going to be coaching, so that's a challenge. I think that the moment that you start to facilitate and you kind of start to closely look of what the coaching theory or, or uh, coaching science tells you, and you start to question what you are doing yourself. So when I'm coaching, I'm thinking, okay, I'm coaching this. Did I really apply this when I was coaching myself? Did I really change? Let's say I know that in my coaching style, I was often, I don't want to say dictatorial, but I was pretty much like army. Okay, you, you do it, this has to be done like this. Where right now, um, I think I'm a little bit more open to, to other approaches and actually with, for past 10 years, it's you know, more and more science is coming out with this uh, learning by guided experience or by guided discovery. That, you know, when I was younger, I, I didn't come from this system. It was, you do this piece, you do 150 short radius turn it, or you don't. That's the bottom line. Right now, you know, it's more adapted to every athlete, so this may be a reflection of how to work with individual uh, athletes. Well, you know, the personal reasons are different. But often I talk to my colleagues who are working on different level and whenever we talk about athletes they will comment something like, well, you know, the kids are coming to me but they don't have this skill developed 
or they missed some entire part of development when they were kids and now I cannot do it because this window of opportunity is already closed. Well, somebody has to pass this message to the young coaches. If you don't, we are going to be repeating the same thing. The kids are going to be progressing to to certain age and then they are going to be hitting the wall because they did not learn the basics. Camille, thank you for your dedication, thank you for your time, your motivation, your experience as a facilitator, as the head facilitator for Canada. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. Thanks. Pleasure. Thanks.